Hey guys, I am uh, rebuilding my main computer here. Um, that was the X99. I have the, the Asus the Rampage 5 board in there um, with my uh, 5820. Um, but that is getting redone. Um, we are swapping that out. Uh, most of the computer will be getting swapped out. Most of it I'm bringing home. Um, but for this one, I'm um, getting a new case, new board, new processors, um, new drive, new memory, um, and some new coolers. Um, I got some Noctua's for this guy. Um, and I have the Xeons here. The only thing I don't have is the RAM because I want to verify that I need to get registered ECC memory before I actually go out and buy it. I'm going to try it with regular, but I have a 90%, I'd say 90% chance it's going to fail from what I've been reading. But yeah, here we got the, the Asus Z10PE, um, the D16WS model. Um, it comes in the D8 as well. Um, D8 will do four-way SLI. Um, this one will only do three. Um, it had, the D8 has one more PCI Express slot over this one, uh, but honestly, I don't ever see myself doing any more than three-way also anyways like I did, and I probably wouldn't do three anymore either, just maybe two cards. Um, but So really that doesn't matter to me, um, and this one has IPMI built in, when the D8 model does not. Um, when I use IPMI on like my servers and the server rack, and it's awesome thing to have. Um, I see it's an add-on for the D8 model, but it's like, I don't know, 50, 60 bucks and seems to be pretty hard to find. And it'll add IPMI functionality on as well. But it's already on here and it's the same price. Um, and I have twice as many RAM slots. So I can start populating with 8 gigs instead of 16s and I can still reach a shitload of RAM, 128 gigs, which I would never need anyways. But we did already take this out a little bit ago gonna put her back in here real quick. It's a tight fit. He's a big boy, I'll tell you that. That's that. I didn't even look underneath yet though. The accessories. So this I haven't seen. Um, see we've got two little little compartments here be as many accessories as like the Rampage 5, but that's all right. We got some more SATA cables. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Eight SATA cables to add to my collection. I always need more of them. Installing the M.2 card. Yeah, we'll be getting a 950 Pro in here. Versus my piece of shit OCZ SSDs, I'd never buy them again. Only reason I did is because they were on sale. Samsung all the way. I just kind of got like a little cheat sheet, quick reference guide on the board. TVs I won't use. Get everything online. Uh, it's up to date. These things are already outdated by the time it ships ships out to you. We got a nice, oh, a nice black three-way SLI bridge. That's cool. I didn't think it'd be nice and black like that. That's just like on the rampage. Even the back plate is a nice black. It's thick, insulated. And usually on like workstation server class boards, you don't find that. They're usually very basic, very thin, like on the super micros. Oh, I lied. Here's two more SATA cables. Here, looks like a little bias sticker. I'm not sure why I need that. Now we got some old school serial connection, since it is a workstation board, and a VGA. That's right, I forgot, it does have onboard video. So in a future date, I could always throw the board in my server rack for a server, and I don't need a graphics card in it. And then we got a USB 2.0 little back header here. And then we got a two-way SLI bridge. Now that one is ugly brown. 
And then on to the board itself, which is quite beastly in size. It's got some weight to it. And your heat sinks, fairly min minimalistic, if that's how you say it. They're like spring loaded here. So they don't push down super hard. So a little bit of pressure there and that. And I got some Noctua coolers. So the gold kind of kind of blends in with the, the tan beige color that knocked to us, so that's pretty cool. Um, top corner here. Go in the back. Pretty much the, the downside to having this is we, we're going from 10 USB 3.0 ports to 4. <laughs> but that's what hubs are for anyways. And then we got 4 USB 2s as well. Now the D8 model I believe has 6 USB 3s and only two USB 2s. I think that's another difference. Then we put four on this one for some reason. And we got our standard audio output. We got our optical output. We got a keyboard or mouse PS2 port. Somebody's still rocking that. Um, we got both of our Intel gigabits. And then this third one here without a sticker is for the IPMI. Um, that's where you can pretty much remotely go into the computer, whether it's on, off, it locks up, it freezes, manually shut it off, turn it back on, um, diagnostics, temperatures, fan speeds, um, remote desktop, you can virtually mount drives, install OS, all that stuff pretty much from anywhere. Um, IPMI. IPMI is the bomb. Um, the back here is all solid black. Got some caps, some surface mount caps there. Back plate. And then we have our 24 pin ATX connector, as well as our two 8 pins. And I love how they're right next to each other. Um, that I think is awesome for just hiding the wires and making it look nice. Having them here rather than having an 8 over here and an 8 over here. I think the 8, they actually are separated. On the 16, this model, they are not. Um, we have plenty of fan headers, I can see right off the bat, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, uh, just a quick count, I counted nine fan headers from the looks of it, which is just crazy. We got a reset, power buttons, nice, nice looking buttons there. USB 3 header over here. Oh, that's another variant from the 8 to the 16. This one unfortunately only has one USB 3 header and the other one has two. As if you look, this whole area here is laid out differently. I think even the heat sink is different. The other one actually has like a heat pipe that comes down and just because the memory slots are different. Um, our debug code, um, our audio, I believe this does have like a headphone amp on it, so it's actually pretty decent. Um, we got six 10 SATA, 10 SATA ports, and we got our M.2, which goes all the way out here, the max size it looks like it'll take. Um, we'll be putting a 950 Pro in there. And you can always use like an add-in PCI Express card and add one too. Um, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six PCI Expresses. On the top one, you cannot put a full, full length card in like a big graphics card because you are going to run into these but you still can do three-way because you can put one here, here, and here. And you can put a shorter card in the top slot, and it don't matter. Um, we'll have 80 PCI Express lines total, which is just crazy, as we'll have 40 in this Xeon and 40 in this Xeon. And I believe like the top three are tied in this one, and the bottom three are tied into that one. Um, so if you only populate one processor, you put it in one I'm not 100% sure which one, CPU 1, which one's 2. Okay, CPU 1, 1 is actually this one. So I'm assuming that the top three are going to work with that one. If you don't have one in here, these slots will not work. Or vice versa. Um, we've got our 16 slots. Um, the GDR4, um, from my understanding, it only works with registered ECC memory. Um, but I've... People have said they've, they've used it with regular memory, not specifically this board, so that's the kicker. From whatever I can find, this only works with registered memory. Um, so the only thing I'm missing right now is the memory. I 
because I wanted to try just regular DDR first before I went out and spent twice as much on ECC memory when I couldn't care less for my desktop. I mean, it don't matter. I'd rather spend half the price on memory, but the chances of that are pretty slim, but I just wanted to verify just because I've never dealt with this before. But yeah, she's pretty beastly. We have uh, two, uh, what are they, 2695 V3s that are going in these beasts. They're 14 cores, 28 threads. So we'll have 28 cores and 56 threads of, of processing power to get us going. Um, yeah, and then my GTX 980 I'll be stealing and throwing in here too. So we'll be, we'll be all set. Thanks for watching.